Hi there, my name is Mulder and welcome to our Maneater Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 2. In this Maneater Gameplay Tips and Tricks video, we will go over how to fight and defeat two brand new Apex Predators, the Alligator and Mako. We will also go over how to take down two brand new Bounty Hunters, and what kinds of upgrades and abilities you'll unlock once you take down all four of these enemies. Finally, we'll go over some new unlocks and upgradable abilities that your shark will be able to use, focusing on the jaw, fins, and organs. Along with what I believe are certain abilities you should be focusing on, and others, maybe not so much. All that and more, straight ahead. If you enjoy this video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. And now without further ado, let's dive into our Maneater Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 2. I mean, I came down here thinking it'd be a good opportunity for some father-son bonding, but now, I don't know. Let's kick things off with the Apex Predator, the Alligator. You will encounter the Alligator over in the swamp area that you first started off with in the beginning of the game. One thing I've noticed about these Apex Predators is that they tend to show up once you've completed all side missions in that area. These side missions can range from anything from attacking humans, school of fish, you name it. When the Alligator shows up, the first thing you'll notice is that this is a high level Predator. When I took on the Alligator, I was only a level 12, while the Alligator was a level 20. But I still managed to beat it because I learned how to time my dodges just in time. Now what I mean by that is, is that the Alligator has one very powerful ability, which which is a charge attack. You'll notice when the alligator is about to do this when it opens its large mouth and prepares to propel itself towards you, hoping to get a bite out of your health. You'll need to time your dodge just right. This will take a little bit of practice, but once you've gotten down how to properly dodge the alligator, this fight can go a lot smoothly. What made this fight even easier for me was my bioelectrical teeth. Thanks to this jaw ability, I was able to electrocute the alligator every time it missed me, giving me enough time to do a few more extra hits before I had to back away. You are only going to be able to get one to two bites on this alligator before you'll have to back off. If you try to go for a third or fourth bite, the alligator will do a spin with its tail, knocking you back, doing heavy damage. Try to leave this thing to an open area to where not only can it make your fighting a lot easier, but you'll be able to munch on some fish as well to keep your health up. Keep your eyes on its mouth and make sure you know how to time your dodges just right and you'll be able to beat this thing pretty quickly. If you're having difficulty taking down this alligator, make sure you upgrade your hardy to at least tier 3, along with your bioelectrical teeth as well. Now let's talk about the next apex predator, which is the Mako. The Mako, when I fought it, was a level 15 enemy. By this point, I was a much higher level than this enemy, so it made the battle a lot easier for me. This Mako has a lot of similar abilities to what your shark can do as well. It has high agility to where it can go in, snap at you a little bit, and then back off before you're able to do anything. I recommend using your tail to try to hit the Mako when it makes a charge at you, and then trying to attack it with your jaw to where you can then stun it. I was able to lock the Mako in my jaw a little bit, doing a little extra damage as I thrashed it around a little bit. The Mako isn't actually that tough of an enemy to take down. Try to back the Mako into a corner to which its speed will be useless, and use the size of your shark to just simply corner it and take it down. With the Mako's speed taken out of the equation, and your teeth able to stun it for a little bit if you're using the bioelectrical teeth, this battle will be over in no time. Fast and aggressive, the Mako is known as the Peregrine Falcon of Sharks. But as the Peregrine is a land-based bird, this designation means nothing to the Mako. Now let's talk about the two bounty hunters I took down. The way you can summon bounty hunters into the field is when you take down large hunting boats. Make sure you actually are destroying these boats and not just the hunters on the boats. The destruction of the boats actually count towards you summoning these special bounty hunters every single time you destroy them. The more bounty hunters you take down, the more tough of the boats are going to come in and get you. These two new bounty hunters really and honestly weren't that much of a challenge for me. So much so that there really isn't much of a strategy to take them down aside from the one that I previously mentioned in my first video. Simply charge at them through the water, jump out, grab them off their boats, and then munch them down in the middle of the water away from their allies, and then boom, you're done taking down the bounty hunters. However, I will get into the fact of the four new abilities I unlocked after I took down all four of these enemies. Bone fins allow my shark to do extra damage and doing a spinning move which can tear apart boats and other enemies as well caught in its path. Mineral digestion which allows you to get more minerals out of creatures you take down, along with the fact that you also get more health returned to you every time you eat a fish or a human being. Another ability I got was called Amphibious which allows you then to go on land and last on land a lot longer, along with the fact to be able to traverse on land a lot quicker as well. And the last one I got was Adrenaline Gland, which once you're near death will automatically give your shark extra bonuses on its speed while your health is still low in order to either get away from an enemy or fight him off to the very end. Ah! 
And finally, let's talk about where I have most of these abilities upgraded to at this point and what they're giving back to me in exchange for upgrading them to higher tiers. My bioelectrical teeth are currently at tier four. This new upgrade allows my stun ability to last a lot longer on enemies, along with me doing about eight bits of damage every single time I bite into them while they're still stunned. Thanks to this tier upgrade, I was able to take down those apex predators I mentioned earlier a lot faster than usual because I upgraded this ability very quickly. Next up is my bone fins, which I currently have at tier three. These bone fins are excellent for taking down hunter boats and any other type of watercraft if you're caught in a pinch. I have my advanced sonar at tier four, allowing me to see things a lot further on my map, find hidden items like caches, license plates, landmarks, and fighting hidden gates. Hardy is currently at tier four as well, allowing me to take on damage a lot easier and increasing my overall health as well. My mineral digestion is currently at tier four as well. Now getting a few extra points for digesting minerals is helpful enough, but the biggest thing about this ability is the fact of how much health you get back now from when you're consuming fish. I definitely recommend you should get your mineral digestion to at least tier three. That way you'll be able to not worry about your health so much, especially when you need to feed in the middle of a fight. Now that's currently the abilities I have active on my shark right now. The two abilities I currently have that I am not using is the amphibious ability, which is currently at my tier three. It's a good ability to go out on land and try to stay on land a lot longer while you're trying to munch away humans, but I gotta be honest with you, I never really found myself in danger of dying on land. And now the last ability I'm not currently using is the adrenal gland, which is steer at tier one. The extra 10% activation that you get for when this thing kicks in, which allows you to go a lot faster, all great and good, but the one downside is, is that this ability only activates when you're low on health. For me, I'd rather have that ability be taken over by say the mineral digestion to where instead of worrying about my health getting so low, I at least have the ability activated to where I get more health back when I need to feed in the middle of a fight. I hope this gives you an idea of what abilities you would like to use once you unlock these abilities and jump into the game yourself. And that is it for our Man Eater gameplay tips and tricks part two. We'll be diving even further into this game, showing you new enemies and new abilities as I progress along the game. So be sure to stick around for our next Man Eater gameplay tips and tricks part three video coming along the way. As always, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. Thank you so much for watching our Man Eater gameplay tips and tricks part two video, and I'll see you very soon.